this is Ryofu, and you're watching The Gaming Harbinger. So I'm sure everyone has heard the word at this point, and uh, I literally stopped working on the video <laughs> that is supposed to come out, and instead you're seeing this video now. And the reason for that is because um, for someone that's made a Ghostwire video, for someone that made, at least I feel anyways, a very compelling Evil Within 2 video, you know, just really talking about how much it blew my mind. I felt like I needed to make this video. For the past two years, I've been getting comment after comment after comment, too bad we won't get another Evil Within. Too bad. It's too bad. It's a damn shame. And do you know what I've said to each and every one of those comments? Don't worry. They're still going to make one. But unfortunately, it may not be on PlayStation. That's been my take because I believe that to be true. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought we were going to get an Evil Within 3. I thought, well, Microsoft has a crap ton of money. We're probably going to get a Ghostwire Tokyo 2. That would be cool. There are so many things they could do to approve upon the gameplay. Like the concept, the Shinto imagery, all of that stuff is rock solid. Now they just need to approve they just need to improve upon the gameplay. That's what they need to do. Man was I wrong. Man was I wrong. Microsoft has shut down four studios, Arcane Austin, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog Games, and Roundhouse Studios. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I don't want this to sound like I'm being disrespectful by any means. But in this video, we're going to specifically talk about Tango Gameworks because I feel like I've talked a lot about their games. I've talked a lot about Shinji Mikami on my channel. And let's be honest, if you, I don't know if you can see right now that I have a Ghostwire Tokyo shirt. So it was a game that I really liked. I understand that it kind of didn't hit all the marks. It may not have been a big seller, but I felt like there was still quite a few people talking about it positively. I honestly was tickled to death that Microsoft had inadvertently acquired a Japanese studio. I was like, how cool is that? And not only that, it's Shinji Mikami's. That's pretty damn cool. And I thought, now they're going to have the opportunity to just make games and kind of fill out this area that uh, Microsoft desperately needs. This was screaming a big opportunity. And to see this, I mean, it's just very, extremely disappointing. Very disappointing. When I think about when they first announced that Bethesda was going to be acquired by Microsoft, I'm thinking, what was the point of that banner? What was the point of showing all the studios that you acquired? And going just a little further into the future, when Redfall dropped, they still talked about uh, Arcane Austin like, uh, hey, you know, okay, they had a dud, but we know them for all these other games they did in the past. So it's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. It, it really wasn't fine. It really wasn't okay. So it's just like, what was the point of even making those comments? So it truly feels at this point like all of this was just all about Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, and Starfield. That's that's what it feels like this was all about. It wasn't about any other games, and it's like that's what they're going to hyper-focus on. This takes me back to that moment when we were learning they were interested in acquiring Activision, but we weren't really sure if that was going to go through or not. And I was thinking the whole time, like, dude, you just got Bethesda chill out. Just focus on that. Let Bethesda do their thing. And then the other uh, studios you acquired previously, prior to Bethesda, let them do their thing. Let's, let's see those games. We will, you know, that's important. And just focus on the ones you have now, because you have a lot of them. It just seems like because of the Activision acquisition that this has caused more problems, almost like now... They have to cut costs in a lot of places, which I get it. I, I totally get it. But it's like 
I don't know. Maybe it shouldn't have happened. Microsoft announces four studio closures, including Arcane Austin and Tango Gameworks, creators of Prey and Hi-Fi Rush, respectively. Hi-Fi... You son of a bitch. Hi-Fi Rush was your highest rated game in recent memory. We're looking at Japanese studios. We are hoping to acquire Japanese studios. Bro, you shut down your only Japanese studio that you inherited. And by the way, they delivered your best game of 2023. What the fuck are we doing? Boy, talk that talk, Maddie. <laughs> Man, talk that talk, Maddie. Maddie ain't playing around with you clowns. I love it. I'm here for it. Shout out to Mr. Matty Plays and RGT85. I really respect their energy through all of this. Like, there's some people, don't get me wrong, like, everybody's acting like, oh, I'm so angry. I'm so frustrated about all this. Ah! But to be honest with you, like, the arguments they're presenting, I feel like it's coming from a place of what you're saying is not making sense. And it, not only that, but specifically a studio that does well is being rewarded with being let go. Also, too, I mean, there's some people out there, don't don't get me wrong, there's some people that are just covering the news and they just rage over everything. I'm not one of those people, and I don't really, I'm not intrigued by those type of channels. So then when I do see people that, I don't see them angry too often, and then when you do see them get angry, I'm like, okay, this is something that maybe should rile you up just a little bit, just a little bit. Because it's pretty damn crazy. Something that Maddie said about 343, I'm going to keep it real with you. Like, I know this is a hot take, but their Halo games, I was actually okay with. I think they weren't fire, though. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't kill it. But I felt like they were strong, decent titles. But they should have been so much more. And then I know everybody, well, let me rephrase that. Maybe not everybody, but we'll say most people were not happy with the story decisions that played out in Halo 5. I get it. I totally get it. But with that being said, I think Maddie made a very compelling point. Like, what are we doing where 343 has had multiple chances and we're getting mixed reactions from the stuff that they're putting out? And then uh, we have Tango Gameworks that makes a critically acclaimed game. And it sells decently or is played decently, at least from Microsoft's own people telling us that it was a runaway success. But then the studio gets shut down. That That is a major fumble. It is not a good look. The reason why I was like, I don't want them to acquire Activision is because I felt like within the community of gamers, I felt like people were going to look at this as... They're not building anything from the ground up. They're just buying people out and it's not going to be respected. And then also too, within the studios, they have a choice. Do I really want to stay here or do I want to bounce? I mean, we heard from Arcane Austin that that seemed to be the case, like, which let's jump into this a minute because there is some sections where there's some misinformation I feel being spread. So with Arcane Austin, it does appear that Microsoft didn't force them to make Redfall or anything like that. It sounds like Redfall was already in production and uh, Bethesda wanted them to make this type of game, wanted them to make a multiplayer game just like Fallout 76. They didn't want to do it. They wanted to stick to single player games. So a lot of them did leave. And then Microsoft comes along and says, hey, uh, how's this game going? And they're like, to be honest with you, maybe we should cancel this. And it sounds like Microsoft's like, that's fine. And I don't know if that necessarily means it was Phil Spencer that gave the thumbs up to, yeah, just go ahead and come out with it. It's fine. We need something. So a second thing I've been seeing around that's been kind of spread as misinformation is that Shinji Mikami was like, you know, as soon as uh, Microsoft said, hey, yeah, guess what? We bought you guys out. And then he's just like, peace, I'm out of here. And that is not what happened. This man's been making games since like 1990. You know, he was for, with Capcom for God knows how long. 
this man has been making games for a very, very, very long time. And it sounded like he wanted to do other things, some video game related, as in assisting younger devs. But some of it sounded like it was outside of gaming. So, and, and it sounds like he wanted to do this like eight years ago, like eight years from 2023. So he was planning on leaving a long time ago, but he had the commitments with his company. And so he decided to stay a little bit longer. And so that's the reason it has nothing to do with Microsoft acquiring Bethesda. Now, there was a time I did have like a theory, like I was wondering, hmm, I wonder if maybe, if maybe when Shinji Mikami left, did a lot of other people leave? And maybe what was left of Tango Gameworks, maybe it was a very small crew. So, I mean, when we think of Arcane Austin, okay, that situation was kind of dire. So it's unfortunate, but, you know, a lot of people left. So... I kind of get that. But with Tango Gameworks, it's, you know, there's some gray area there. So I don't know if a lot of people left because Shinji Mikami left or if uh, there were still a lot of people employed. And we have no way of knowing that unless someone comes forward and shares that information, which who knows? Maybe later on down the future, we'll find that out. If you don't know who Shinji Mikami is, he was the director of the original Resident Evil, as well as what some people regard as the personal favorite, not my personal favorite, but Resident Evil 4. He also worked on games like Vanquish, Beautiful Joe, Dino Crisis, uh, of course, Ghostwire Tokyo, The Evil Within, and, and what, what was another one? God Hand. I always wanted to play that game because it just looks... So strange, but looks highly entertaining. But but anyways, he's done a lot of games. And because he's done so many games, I feel like he has a reputation. Like, just him having this studio and Microsoft owning this studio, I would say that means something. It holds some value. And I think it would have been wise for Microsoft to hold on to it, at least, and see if they could try to get a foothold of Japanese developers to make games for them. I mean, that's what they told us they wanted to do, right? And yet here we are, they're closing their only Japanese studio. So I did watch that Sarah Bon interview and it just seems like, you know, she's being told to do something, you know, something that happens a lot of times in leadership. You're told to do something and you may not agree with it, but you have to do it. And that's just the nature of the beast. Um, obviously, I don't know this woman at all, but but when you see her posts on Twitter, she seems to be someone that genuinely cares about the industry. But then when you're watching this interview, it's like she's frowning a lot, making faces. She just doesn't look comfortable. She doesn't look happy. To be honest with you, I would even go a step further and say she looks sad. Now, am I projecting? I don't know, because let's keep it real. I don't know her. You know, I don't know her. But that's what it looks like in an interview. So I don't, in this situation, I can honestly say that this interview did not help. It was not a good idea to do this interview. But like I said, she probably had to. I mean, as most of you guys know, you know, I play on every console. I love the gaming industry. I've always been fascinated by it. I love video games. But right now, this is not a good look for Microsoft. And I'm someone that always tries to be balanced and fair and not be biased or show favoritism. Are there moments where I have biases? Sure. You know, I play a lot of Japanese games. It is what it is. But, um, but I also, there's aspects of Microsoft that I absolutely love, you know, which I've talked about in countless other videos. And there's definitely been times that I've stuck up and defended Xbox because I felt like sometimes they're bash and hated just because it's the cool thing to do. But I have to say, you know, as much as I would like to say, oh, this is another moment where Xbox will rise from the ashes like a phoenix. This is, you know, definitely a time that I absolutely cannot defend them.